Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. Today we will start a new module, module number 6. So, there will be 5 lectures in this module. So, the topic is on use of modern techniques in watershed management. So, the topics include applications of geographic information system, remote sensing in watershed management, role of decision support system in watershed management. So, in module 6 in to today in lecture number 12, 22, in lecture number 22, we will discuss GIS applications in watershed management. So, in lecture number 22, GIS and application watershed management, some of the important topics covered include geographic information system, GIS implementation, GIS spatial data model, advantages of geographic information system, GIS dimensionality, applications in watershed management. Some of the keywords for today's lecture include geography information system, spatial data model, dimensionality, ARC GIS. So, as we discussed in some of the earlier lectures, so watershed management and planning is a very complicated, very comprehensive plan we have to make or it is a very complicated process. So, we need, we have to deal with the large data sets, we have to manipulate various data sets and create say new new maps, all those things are required. So, that way geography information system or GIS, the so called GIS is very much useful for the preparation of watershed management plans. So, in today's lecture we will see what are the important applications as far as GIS is concerned for watershed management plans. So, first let us have a look into the introductory aspects of GIS and then we will see how we can effectively apply the GIS for preparing various watershed management plans and then as far as uh, the implementation also considered we can use GIS. So, let us look into some of the introductory aspects of GIS. So, GIS or so called GIS information system is a computer based decision making tool to plan, implement and govern the objects in space. So, we can see that there is lot of variation is taking place, lot of data is we have to deal uh, say as far as a watershed is concerned since watershed is an area of large size. Uh, so, we have to deal different types of data. So, that way uh, this GIS is uh, say is a very useful tool. So, it is a, a decision making tool to plan, uh, implement and govern uh, various objects uh, in, in, a sp in a spatial format. So, GIS accepts large volumes of spatial data derived from different sources, retrieve it, manipulate it, analyze and display according to user defined specifications. So, that way we can see that we can feed uh, various data sets uh, in a GIS platform, in a GIS software to a computer and then we can manipulate uh, those uh, data sets to create new new maps. So, for example, for uh, in the within the perspective of uh, watershed management, uh, we can generate a detailed elevation model, we can generate um, soil map, land use land cover map, then uh, we can generate grids. So, like that uh, so many applications are possible uh, as far as watershed management uh, which we will be discussing later. So, that way uh, we can see that GIS accept large uh, volumes of spatial data and then uh, uh, we can make into uh, user defined specification. So, some of the important components of GIS include data inputs, data outputs, storage and management and then of course, manipulation and analysis. So, actually GIS is a software. So, that way uh, once we uh, install in a computer, so that uh, the, through that uh, um, through the computer we can uh, give the data inputs and then uh, uh, we can obtain the data output from the computer and then um, uh, the storage and management things can be done within the computer and uh, with the software does various manipulation and analysis. So, that we can generate uh, new new maps or other kinds of things which are possible within the geography information system. So, main aspect is data handling. So, GIS is a tool for uh, data handling. So, this data is concerned it can be uh, raster or vector. So, raster means it can be a generally a grid based system. So, you can see that we can have a, 
uh, grid like this and then uh, we can represent uh, uh, various uh, say objects or various uh, data with respect to uh, this grid. So, that is uh, so called um, uh, raster uh, uh, based data and then uh, the data can be also vector based where we can use uh, uh, points, uh, then coordinates, uh, lines, polygons, areas etcetera. So, that is the uh, vector vector based uh, data set. So, uh, using uh, this as I mentioned we can uh, generate um, say within the space uh, the spatial variation how the uh, elevation is varying. So, that way we can make a digital elevation model and then extract various things and how the system is uh, behaving. And then also we can use uh, uh, say uh, triangular uh, irregular network so called TIN. So, we can uh, represent uh, the system uh, using uh, uh, say uh, the, uh, tri the various triangles connected network uh, say regular triangle connected network and then represents uh, how the variation say for example, how the the direction of a river changes or how the position of the uh, of a well or uh, how, how say where the uh, the pond is located. So, like that many many aspects or many objects uh, within a watershed uh, we can represent. Uh, within a uh, GIS environment. So, that way uh, GIS uh, transform data into information on spatial locations of entities that occupy space uh, in natural and built environment. So, it can be uh, either a natural environment or built environment. So, that way uh, the uh, GIS transform the whatever data we put into and then uh, we can see say the variations. So, the data generally will be spatial data. So, spatial say whenever especially uh, in the case of watershed management mode uh, say plants, we have to see how the variation is taking place for various parameters say for example, hydraulic conductivity or the, the rain fall variation or we have say soil type variation. So, all those th things are special variations or special data sets which we have to utilize uh, various purposes. So, uh, say uh, so some of the uh, say research says that uh, 80 percent of all information held in databases anywhere in the world contains some uh, or other kind of uh, geographic ele elements. So, that means it, it can be with respect to spatial variation of uh, various objects. So, that is what is generally we call it as um, say data. So, 80 percent of all information uh, is some uh, or other kind of geographic element will be there. So, information that has say for example, a, a location. So, where is it located whether it is can be represented as a point or it can be a line or it can be a, a polygon and then uh, values. Uh, so, we can specify various values so called uh, attribute data. So, then uh, also we can have um, additional information uh, like a connectivity. So, for example, uh, say one place to another place say how we can connect th say through roads or through uh, channel network or what kind of connectivity is possible. And then a second one is contiguity. So, that means the, the, the continuous variation how it is taking place. So, that way uh, GIS gives the information about any entity that has location and can be shown on map. So, that variation we can obtain. So, example maps of state of India or any uh, country. So, from that map uh, we can identify where is some specific uh, place is located or specific institute is located or specific things are located. So, the data can be generally conventional data like uh, with attributes of the spatial uh, entity. Uh, so, like example state wise uh, per capita income or how is the population variation, what is the education of the population or how the um, literacy rate, where are the wells are located or um, uh, say how the uh, the uh, water resource availability varies. So, like that uh, these kinds of things we can represent uh, as a spatial data generally in a, in a convention way. Then uh, say we can have the, the say various things based upon the, the data we can uh, say manipulate the data and then uh, we can obtain various other kinds of um, maps or uh, results can be produced and then we can interpret the these results. So, uh, then uh, uh, this uh, the results can be represented or presented in the form of a map. So, you can see that here say a channel network map or the variation of the the 
the the soil variations or soil map or it can be say the uh, the land use land cover map uh, so like that and then uh, we have to put it in a visualization model so visualization is the coming from the uh, computer output so that way this can be supplemented by spatial and as spatial uh, queries of um, model results so whatever the in uh, the we give a uh, different types of data inputs and then we process it within the computer or within the software and then uh, we uh, uh, create um, uh, various uh, say outputs uh, either in map form or the spatial variation form or spatial queries uh, as the uh, model results. So, that way uh, the geographical, uh, geographical information system or GIS uh, works. So, there are uh, large number of applications as far as GIS is concerned it is not only watershed management, but town planning then uh, uh, say like uh, the geography the, the uh, uh, various city planning or um, say the, uh, the population behavior or the social economical aspects. So, many places we can uh, use the GIS. So, that way GIS is uh, capable to capture, store, manipulate, analyze and visualize diverse set of spatial data. So, as I mentioned this is what is happening within a GIS environment, uh, GIS capture, store, manipulate, analyze and visualize. So, the, the so that way the various spatial data set uh, we can uh, uh, say give us input and uh, make uh, different kinds of uh, different data set as output. So, spatial pers perspective is very useful in the establishment of linkage between uh, various types of processes uh, that is uh, say for example, if water is concerned the hydrological processes, uh, soil erosion, vegetation cover, uh, human activities etcetera and also uh, how they interact between them say for example, uh, say how the, the people uh, say uh, the, the human interaction takes place within a watershed uh, or uh, the uh, say how the vegetation cover is varying. So, like that the special so with respect to the spatial perspective uh, we can uh, get a lot of information back with by using the uh, GIS. So, if you look into the literature uh, various uh, GIS packages are available some of the most commonly used packages uh, and um, the companies which uh, which market uh, th these products are listed here. So, most widely used uh, GIS package is uh, ARCINFO or ARCVIEW and uh, that is uh, marketed by S3. Then uh, AutoCAD map uh, which is marketed by Autodesk, uh, 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 then uh, GRASS which is an open uh, GIS software which is uh, freely available which is produced by Baylor University as Texas. Then uh, IDRISI uh, produced by Clark Labs then uh, ILVIS, ILWIS institute for aero survey and uh, um, uh, earth science in Netherlands international institute. Uh, so, this is from Netherlands then map info, uh, map information corporation, uh, MF works think space in incorporation uh, incorporated, a geo media intergraph company then micro station Bentley system, um, PAMAP, PAMAP, PCA geomatics, uh, spans, TIDAG income. Uh, gram plus plus say for example, IIT Bombay's um, GA software. So, like that the market depending upon the needs uh, what kind of work you are looking to do with the uh, GIS package, uh, various types of packages are available. Uh, so, depending upon the upon your needs uh, say specific package uh, we can buy and then utilize, but one of the most commonly used uh, GIS package is so called ARC info or ARC view from uh, S3. Uh, so, now let us see what happens um, uh, say um, uh, within a GIS platform how to represent the surfaces uh, or uh, subsurfaces which we, we have to generally uh, deal uh, within watershed management plans. So, as I already mentioned uh, we can uh, generate detailed elevation models or triangular irregular network tins and then uh, say and contours available for uh, surface representation. So, we can represent the surface either uh, using uh, the uh, say, uh, say grid based system by using detailed elevation models or triangular irregular networks or contour and contours available. And a cross section shown is generally shown by uh, fencing or stacked surfaces and uh, uh, so, you can see that the stacked surfaces just uh, shown in this figure we can uh, have various stacks like this. Uh, 
and then uh, so, but generally true th three dimensional volume uh, uh, representation is beyond the scope of most of the GIS packages. And then also we can uh, present by wireframe models capable of displaying geological cross sections and uh, borehole geo geophysical data say for example, when we are uh, dealing with uh, watersheds we have to deal with the boreholes and then its data. So, that also we can represent then selection of particular spatial data source then uh, data structure file format quantization and uh, error pro propagations um, then uh, GIS software's uh, uh, efficient algorithms for dealing with uh, most of the, the data sets. So, by using various uh, things we can uh, generate the uh, surface and then uh, we can represent either in a stack form or uh, uh, say uh, by various uh, attributes. Uh, so, surface generation can be done and then uh, the spatial resolution and information content we can uh, cross check and then say for example, when we have to deal with the drainage network within a watershed uh, that also we can represent with respect to the surface uh, or subsurface uh, modeling. Uh, and then uh, uh, say if you want to represent say for example, the spatial variation of the rainfall or precipitation. So, then also we can represent using the contours or the, the various um, polygons filling uh, like that. So, various aspects are available uh, uh, when we are trying to represent the uh, surfaces and subsurface within the uh, GIS uh, environment. So, now uh, say for example, if we are going to uh, say uh, use GIS uh, say what are the major stages uh, of GIS in, uh, implementation. So, that I have listed here. So, uh, first of all you should have GIS uh, awareness. Uh, so, uh, say what a GIS package can what is GIS what GIS can do uh, what are the objectives depending upon the your needs what kind of problem can be solved. So, all those things uh, so we should understand. So, there should be some at least some introductory GIS awareness uh, as far as um, when you are before you implement the GIS in, in your system for various purposes. Then the second uh, stage is um, uh, defining the needs. So, what are your needs? So, project uh, specific or what kind of needs are there? So, that we can uh, um, um, uh, obtain details from by using the feasibility studies or, or say um, the functional requirement study. And then uh, we have to see that what is the budget which can be spent for uh, the GIS uh, implementation and then uh, uh, its training and other things. So, that way we can come up with a proposal. Uh, then uh, say we can the third stage we can select appropriate packages depending upon uh, the suitability specific needs then uh, market survey and so that we can purchase. And then uh, fourth stage is uh, GIS implementation. So, here uh, say we can obtain the pa package from the vendor and then uh, we can install it in the computer. Uh, then uh, uh, we can train the manpower within the organization and then uh, say for the given specific projects we can create the database uh, depending upon the needs. So, database design and development and then uh, say we can check whatever the things which we are looking for whether the cons considered software or GIS can do. So, case study and implementation and then uh, we can develop manpower within the organization and then uh, field applications for specific case studies, specific projects depending upon the needs uh, we can utilize it. And then of course, uh, we have to uh, the operational maintenance we have to see. So, that uh, some system administrator or who, who, who is the generally dealing with the GIS package. So, uh, we can address to uh, that person as far as the operation and maintenance. So, these are the important or major stages of uh, GIS implementation. Then, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, uh, GIS can be used for uh, various applications. So, uh, let, let us look into what are the important advantages of uh, GIS uh, uh, usage. So, uh, say uh, as I mentioned already, it is a uh, computer software. So, which we install in a computer and then we give a, uh, say input and then we generate various outputs in terms of maps or various um, uh, objects. So, that way uh, uh, so let us look into what are the advantages of GIS implementations. So, GIS is uh, first of all it is interactive. So, uh, uh, say from one we can overlay various maps and then see what is happening. So, interactive visualization and analysis are possible uh, within the GIS. 
and then um, we can utilize uh, this GIS for the planning and management of um, various schemes just like watershed management plans and then um, say the city development plans uh, like that. And then um, uh, say special data management and access. So, we can uh, say uh, keep on adding data input to the system and then uh, say we can access whenever it is needed in various formats. Then uh, we can use it for environmental risk assessment. Say once it is set, we can see that how the system say how the behavior is within as far as the, the, the system is concerned that we can study using the GIS. Uh, then uh, GIS can be used for uh, multi dimensional planning even though mainly spatial variation, but um, we can create the spatial variations for various scenarios and then uh, we can uh, use GIS for planning. Uh, then uh, customs applications uh, development for uh, decision support, so customized applications say for specific type of works. So, we can uh, create a system and then uh, that can be utilized for uh, decision support for the decision support system. And then um, also we can have web, web accessible uh, spatial information is possible. So, once it is uh, various uh, in inputs are given and uh, we can uh, say any general public can access through uh, web uh, uh, say and then uh, visualize uh, what are the uh, scenarios, what are the various alternatives for particular projects. So, like that. So, these are some of the advantages of uh, a GIS Im implementation for a uh, particular projects um, uh, say within the uh, GIS environment. So, now, uh, so by now what we have discussed is the uh, introductory aspects of uh, geographic information system. So, now uh, we will come back to our major topic of uh, watershed management. So, how effectively we can utilize uh, geographic information system uh, within the perspective of watershed management. So, um, let us uh, look into various aspects. So, the vital components of watershed management uh, uh, say various aspects are uh, listed here. So, generally we may deal with the soil and land resource uh, data for planning at uh, uh, micro level or um, um, uh, say uh, large scale uh, macro level. Uh, then um, uh, say uh, we can create a multi temporal database for uh, natural resources. So, how the with respect to time how the variation is taking place. So, each uh, uh, say particular year or particular uh, season we can uh, create the database and then how it is uh, behaving that we can study. And then uh, uh, we can uh, say within the perspective of watershed management people participation is very important. So, people participation uh, uh, say uh, within a GIS environment we can uh, load various uh, data sets input and then within the from that we can obtain the say the road net network or the, how the location of various houses or the water availability. So, all those things um, uh, we can do uh, within the uh, GIS and so the awareness of farmers, policy makers, users, uh, soil conservationists and scientists. So, uh, so everybody uh, uh, say either it can be farmer, policy makers, engineers, um, scientists all, all people can utilize uh, GIS in a very effective way uh, for the uh, uh, for the development of plans or implementation or say in an overall watershed management perspective. So, people participation we can go at a micro level very uh, small say for example, uh, stakeholder level itself we can see uh, uh, how the say uh, we can make GIS data available uh, for uh, the uh, uh, stakeholder each uh, uh, stakeholder. Uh, then uh, various uh, hydrological modeling or various uh, things we can integrate. So, technological integration is possible and then uh, uh, GIS along with the conventional database uh, we can uh, generate various uh, types of maps. So, that will be very useful as far as watershed management is concerned. And then uh, also hydrological modeling we can uh, utilize the uh, geographic information system uh, and then also we can use for economic analysis. So, like um, the economic viability or uh, to identify the uh, benefit cost ratio. So, all those places we can uh, effectively utilize the GIS. So, the technological adoption and conventional practices uh, we can effectively uh, manage with the uh, help of a uh, geographical information uh, system. 
So, now we have seen that GIS can be utilized for various purposes as a within the perspective of watershed management. So, let us look what are the basic steps in typical GIS application as far as a watershed uh, within the watershed perspective is concerned. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, say uh, we can uh, generate uh, digital elevation model say within the perspective of watershed and then uh, this acquisition of digital elevation model data from say for example, from topo sheets or we can generate the DEM or we can get uh, through various sources. Then uh, conduct a digital elevation model processing to derive stream catchments and drainage point features. So, once uh, uh, a watershed is delineated by using a GIS and then a digital elevation model is generated, we can utilize to identify the drainage location, the stream pattern, then uh, the drainage point uh, etcetera. And then uh, we can populate the data with uh, required attributes to identify various things uh, within the uh, watershed. So, uh, we can also use network analysis and uh, say for example, within the arc info environment we can use arc hydro tools. So, the arc info or arc, uh, uh, arc view uh, has arc hydro tools related to water related issues. So, that we can utilize to derive uh, desired matrices and then we can plan uh, uh, say we can generate uh, various related maps. So, that way now uh, the geographic information system have become an uh, integral part of uh, hydrology. So, G GIS has become an integral part of hydrology. Uh, so, in each and every aspects of hydrological modeling or hydrological planning or watershed management we can utilize geographic information system. So, various types of maps we can generate using the GIS just like a topographical map, land use map, land cover map, uh, soil map, then uh, rainfall um, uh, related maps, then uh, meteorological uh, variables. So, like that uh, GIS helps to generate uh, various uh, types of maps which are uh, very useful in uh, uh, hydrological modeling and uh, watershed uh, management. So, now let us look into say, say as I already mentioned the geography, geographical information system is say is working based upon the data input and data manipulation. So, data source is very important, data structure is very important. So, let us look into various aspects of data sources and structures. So, a variety of data source and structure for a single hydraulic parameter we can uh, uh, say put through GIS. So, for example, topography can be represented by a series of uh, point elevations, contour lines, triangular uh, regular network. So, we can see that uh, like this triangular regular network uh, elevation in a gridded or rectangular coordinator system. So, uh, each and every aspects of uh, uh, the hydrologic parameters or watershed related things uh, uh, we can represent by uh, various things like it can be either using uh, the uh, points, uh, lines, uh, polygons or triangular uh, irregular network or uh, contours uh, or elevations. So, like that various things we can represent and based upon that we can generate various other maps. And then say for example, uh, rainfall is concerned uh, we can have time series at a point, array of rainfall rates uh, derived from radar, uh, gridded array of rainfall rates, isohydro contours. So, all those uh, these things we can represent once the rainfall data is uh, given within the GIS uh, platform. Uh, we can have uh, either say time series or the contours or isohydro contours. Then uh, say for example, if we consider infiltration rates, how the infiltration is varying uh, within the watershed we can uh, say we can have the soil maps and then according to the soil nature the infiltration rates also varies as we already uh, discussed earlier. So, these soil maps can be used to represent uh, within a uh, GIS environment to identify how the infiltration uh, race taking place. Then evapotranspiration rates or uh, hydraulic references um, say depending upon the land use land cover the hydraulic reference will be varying. So, that uh, by using a uh, say land use land cover map we can identify the hydraulic roughness variation within the GIS environment. And then evapotranspiration variation with, with respect to vegetation or with respect to various uh, water bodies we can identify uh, within a uh, GIS environment. So, raster array of remotely sensed uh, surrogate measures also can be used as far as uh, the, uh, the to identify the evapotranspirations or the uh, hydraulic roughnesses. 
then uh, uh, say uh, GIS as I mentioned it is giving the spatial variation and then based upon that we are generating new new maps or new new uh, data sets. So, the spatial GIS as a spatial data model. Uh, so, uh, G, uh, the spatial data are referred to as uh, layers or coverages or series of layers. So, as I already mentioned it can be uh, say single layer or it can be various coverages within that uh, layer itself or it can be series of uh, layers uh, superposed over overlaid depending upon the needs. Uh, so, that way uh, the, the, the data can be put as either uh, raster variation or vector variation. Uh, so, ra raster is grid based and vector is either point based or uh, lines or polygons. So, vector data represents uh, features uh, as discrete points, lines and polygons. So, say for example, uh, arc info coverages. So, this we can utilize for to represent the, the lines, points or polygons. Then RGS shape files can be used for point, line or polygon and then um, CAD say AutoCAD DXF for DWG or micro station DGN files. Then ASCII coordinate uh, data can be used to represent uh, points or uh, say lines. So, like that uh, various uh, spatial data um, uh, 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 modeling can be done within the uh, GIS uh, environment. So, as I mentioned uh, uh, the data can be either raster based or vector based. So, raster is concerned raster data represents the landscape as a uh, rectangular matrix of uh, square cells. We represent the system as a rectangular uh, uh, matrix of square cells and then within that uh, uh, grid how the variation of uh, various parameter is taking place. So, that way the raster representation. So, earlier we discussed about the the last slide we uh, discussed about the vector variation. So, now the raster variation. So, some of the examples arc info grids uh, which directly we can utilize or the images how the images we can represent in a raster format. Then uh, detail elevation model by using the spatial variation uh, raster way and then using the cone and then uh, generic uh, raster data sets. So, all those things we can uh, utilize say as far as GIS spatial uh, data model is concerned. So, that way uh, say uh, depending upon the package depending upon the need whether we can have a raster based system or a vector based system and uh, then say one to another uh, conversion also possible in most of the uh, GIS packages. So, now let us look into the GIS uh, dimensionality. So, uh, as far as dimensionality is concerned uh, 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 GIS does not follow precise Euclidean notions of 1, 2 and 3 dimensional data it is not uh, uh, exactly following, but uh, the, with some variations. So, example generally stream network um, uh, composed of vectors in 2 D, but uh, here nodes and uh, various points along the stream uh, may be represented by uh, 1 D point data. So, for example, this is a watershed where you can see uh, various stream network. So, this will be uh, represented uh, uh, by 1 D point data. Then complexity of data representation offers many possibilities for analyzing uh, hydrological data. So, as I mentioned hydrological data is concerned uh, say it can be the uh, location of the streams, lakes or uh, the, the, the hydrogeological parameter variation. So, these complexities we can uh, directly easily deal with the, uh, the help of GIS. So, distance along the stream is different from simply specifying uh, x y point a particular point. So, that way uh, uh, we cannot uh, uh, we will not have precise Euclidean notions. Then the point data is concerned it is measured quantities are often uh, represented at a single point uh, in 2D space. So, just like in rain gauge station. So, in this particular locations of the rain gauge stations and then uh, it is measured quantities are often represented uh, by using this. So, now uh, some other issues like um, map scale and spatial details uh, within the GIS environment. So, the details are um, mentioned uh, in this slides. Uh, so, map of topography can be shown at any scale uh, in GIS. So, it can be 
one is to 50,000, one is to 10,000. So, whatever uh, uh, say scale uh, we can represent. Resolution of detail elevation model may be altered by resampling to a coarser or finer uh, resolution. So, if coarser data is available, we can make it finer by, by the using the option of uh, uh, resampling. And then uh, uh, hydrologists must decide what scale will be best. Uh, say to to find out the impact of topography on the uh, hydrological processes. So accordingly, uh, we can uh, choose this particular scale 1 is to 100, 1 is to 10,000 or whatever scale we are looking for. And then uh, uh, we have to always uh, see the various data set is given with respect to certain datum. So, we have to select specific datum like a, either mean sea level or whatever uh, specific data, datum we are using. So, we have to select that datum. And then uh, we have to uh, uh, say uh, uh, provide geographic coordinate coordination system within the GIS environment. We have to uh, identify the coordinate system. So we we can use the geographical coordination system uh, by providing at least three specific points where the details are known, and then with respect to that, the uh, variation can be uh, represented. And then a map projection system. So, when we are projecting the map, how the system is behaving. And then, as far as digital elevation model is concerned, as I already mentioned, uh, DEM is an ordered array of numbers uh, representing the spatial distribution of elevations uh, above some arbitrary datum uh, in a landscape. So, DEM consists of elevations sampled at uh, discrete points. So, that way uh, say we will be having the spatial variation and then the vertical or the contour based uh, variation. So, this DEM is actually a subset of uh, digital terrain modeling. Um, so, DT of uh, that means it is a subset of DTM. DTM or digital terrain modeling it is it gives the spatial distribution of terrain attributes like a slope. Uh, soil depth, soil de de drainability, uh, soil fertility, etcetera, say within the within the perspective of watershed management. So, then uh, say we can uh, choose a particular method of representing the surface or subsurface. So, the choice uh, depends on the uh, end use. So, what kind of use finally we will be uh, looking for. So, accordingly uh, we can choose the uh, specific system. Uh, let us come back to the watershed management application as far as GIS is concerned. So, as I already mentioned, GIS has been uh, very much used in you know, most of the watershed management plans. So, GIS has been exploited by the hydrology and watershed management community in uh, various ways. So, some of the important aspects I have listed here. So, uh, uh, we can utilize a geographic information system for watershed delineation. So, these details we have seen uh, in one of the earlier lecture. Then we can uh, use um, GIS for watershed characterization and assessment. Uh, then uh, GIS can be used for watershed management and planning. Uh, then uh, watershed restoration like analysis of alternative management strategies uh, we can uh, develop and check uh, within the uh, GIS platform. Then uh, we can also uh, use GIS for wat uh, developing watershed policy and then analyze it and then uh, we can generate a decision support system which we which the decision makers can uh, utilize uh, to see which is the uh, best alternatives. So, that way large uh, number of applications are there uh, for GIS uh, as far as watershed management is concerned. So, let us look into uh, various uh, types of this application uh, in a detailed way in the next few slides. So, as far as watershed delineation uh, we have already discussed uh, in an earlier lecture. Some of the major steps involved uh, in delineating a watershed uh, I have listed here. So, first we can uh, geo register the scanned topo sheets, uh, then uh, we can create the shape files, then contour digitization can be done, we can then prepare a detail elevation model, uh, then uh, we can fill uh, the detail elevation model, then uh, flow direction uh, we can uh, identify, uh, then flow accumulation raster can be generated, then uh, we can identify which are the pore points and uh, using that we can delineate the watershed. So, this watershed delineation um, we have already discussed in detail in one of the lecture earlier. Then uh, the second aspect is uh, say we can utilize GIS for watershed characterization and assessments. So, GIS has been widely used in character, watershed characterization and assessment studies. Um, uh, so, uh, say to, uh, to 
characterize various characteristics of a watershed we have already seen uh, like um, the topological features, geographical features. So, various uh, characteristics or the its uh, shape of the watershed or the uh, say the uh, elevation variation. So, all this characterization uh, we can uh, uh, study or we can analyze using the uh, GIS. Then the basic uh, physical characteristics of a watershed such as the drainage network and flow paths can be derived from readily available detail elevation models or we can generate our own detail elevation model depending upon the available data or DEM can be directly utilized uh, to identify the drainage network. So, this uh, in conjunction with the uh, precipitation and other water quality uh, monitoring data enhances development of a watershed action plan and identification of existing and uh, uh, potential pollution problems uh, in the watershed. So, it is the uh, uh, GIS not only we can utilize to identify the, the, the source of water or the quantity water quantity issues, but we can also uh, use uh, GIS and uh, platform to identify the possibility of water water pollution or uh, the, the environmental uh, related issues. So, that way uh, the data gathered from uh, say for example, GPS surveys and from environmental remote sensing system can be fused within a GIS for a successful characterization and assessment of watershed functions and conditions. So, that way uh, we can utilize the GIS uh, as a software for watershed characterization and assessments say for example, how much water is available uh, as a water as a source or water as a source and then uh, what are the water quality issues whether particular water uh, source will be polluted. So, all those aspects uh, we can uh, study uh, within a uh, GIS environment. So, then uh, uh, next aspect is watershed management planning. So, uh, as far as watershed is concerned information obtained from uh, characterization and assessment studies uh, we can utilize in the form of charts and maps. So, this we can um, combine with other data sets to improve understanding of the complex relationship between natural and human system. So, as, I, as we have already studied or as already discussed uh, as uh, within the perspective of watershed management, it is uh, uh, human interactions uh, with uh, various natural resources or flora and fauna. So, uh, when we put all this uh, input data within a GIS environment, we can easily study what will happen if this particular uh, project is implemented or particular uh, th things are done within the uh, watershed uh, area. So, then uh, GIS also provides a common framework uh, like spatial location. Uh, for watershed management uh, uh, like that. Then GIS can be a powerful tool for understanding uh, uh, with these processes and for managing uh, potential impacts of human activities. So, as I already mentioned GIS can be util utilized for environmental impact assessments or say for example, if a particular check dam is constructed. So, using GIS uh, say data sets we can identify whether particular say what uh, which of the area will be flooded or where this water can be taken from one lock one the, from the reservoir to the various locations within the uh, watershed. Within the GIS environment modeling and visualization uh, uh, can be done coupled with uh, so once uh, this GIS is coupled with internet and uh, world wide web uh, uh, new tools um, are uh, we are getting to understand the processes and uh, dynamics that shape the physical, biological and chemical environment of watershed. So, when we utilize the GIS platform, then um, the internet and the world wide web. So, uh, we can uh, integrate all these things within with, uh, with respect to say for example, hydrological modeling systems. So, we have um, uh, very uh, specific tools or very uh, efficient tools uh, to assess what will happen in a particular watershed management plans are implemented, what will be the future, all those things uh, we can assess uh, within the uh, GIS uh, environment. So, that way GIS can be used for watershed management and planning. And also the linkage between GIS, internet and environmental databases is especially helpful uh, in planning uh, studies where information exchange and feedback on a timely basis is 
uh, very crucial. So, that way we can utilize uh, GIS uh, within the uh, perspective of uh, say by, by using um, um, uh, GIS internet and world wide web uh, say as uh, within the perspective of hydroinformatics say for example, uh, we can integrate various tools and then uh, we can see uh, say we can generate future scenarios and then see what will be uh, happening. So, that way uh, GIS can be used for watershed uh, management uh, planning. Then uh, also what uh, say GIS can be used for watershed uh, restoration that means, uh, various alternative management scenarios we can generate and then assess. So, that way watershed restoration studies generally involve evaluation of uh, various alternatives. So, various scenarios we can generate and then we have to evaluate those scenarios and then identify which will be the best uh, solution. So, GIS platform can be used for that purpose. So, GIS has been used for restoration studies ranging from relatively small rural watersheds to uh, heavily urbanized landscape. Uh, so, that way we can effectively utilize GIS. So, coupled with a uh, hydrodynamic and specially uh, explicit hydrologic or water quality modeling, uh, GIS can assist in uh, unified source uh, water assessment programming including the total maximum daily load uh, program. So, to assess whether a stream will be highly polluted uh, with respect to the various pollutant sources, uh, we can easily uh, use the uh, GIS environment. So, GIS can also provide a platform for collaboration among researchers, uh, watershed stakeholders and uh, uh, policy makers. So, as I already uh, mentioned uh, say within the perspective of hydroinformatics, so GIS is one of the major component to hydroinformatics system. So, when we combine hydro the GIS um, in uh, the uh, internet and world wide web, and so uh, the researchers and decision makers, stakeholders all can come together within this environment and then uh, uh, can collaborate for uh, various watershed development plans. So, we can integrate the capabilities of GIS uh, which provide an interface to translate and emulate complexities of a real world system uh, within the confines of digital uh, world accurately and efficiently. So, uh, say as I already mentioned earlier a watershed or a river basin is a very large area. So, uh, say we, we cannot uh, move through the area and then identify what is the how the variation or how the system is behaving. But if we can obtain uh, within a GIS environment all the maps or all the details uh, say uh, within a computer and then uh, within a uh, computer display. So, then uh, it is um, we can do various planning and um, management in a very accurate way and very efficient way. So, that way uh, GIS is uh, very uh, helpful. So, now uh, say let us look into a case study uh, say how effectively GIS can be used uh, for watershed management development plans. So, this case study is Amba watershed uh, area. So, uh, here uh, say we have used uh, uh, GIS uh, effectively to uh, uh, say generate various maps and then uh, uh, do a hydrological uh, modeling. So, the study uh, area is uh, lies in the uh, Kalapur Taluk uh, near Kopoli in western Ghats of Raigad district in Maharashtra. So, the uh, the location is east longitude 7315 and 7325 north latitude 1840 and 1850. The topological maps uh, number of uh, survey of India 47 F uh, uh, bar 5, 47 F bar 6 are used for this watershed. So, part of the catchment is numbered as 5 B 2 uh, A 6 by the uh, watershed atlas of India. So, this shows some of the photographs of the area. So, survey of India topo sheets uh, uh, say in within a scale of 1 is to 50,000 uh, uh, with the contour interval of 20 meters used in this uh, study. Uh, so, hourly rainfall data measured at uh, uh, Tuxai uh, meteorological set station situated at Anandnagar uh, adjacent to Amba river is used. So, this is the location where the, the uh, meteorological uh, data is uh, collected. And uh, here uh, say remote sensing data is also used um, uh, IRS 1D uh, list 3 MSS detail data for, for the watershed um, record is obtained for, for the on the on 13th November 2001. And here we use a pixel size of 23.5 meter and the window size is kept as 360 lines by uh, 405 pixels. So, this is the uh, drainage map of um, Amba watershed 
So, here and this, there is a major stream which is uh, going like this and these are some of the minor streams uh, within this watershed. This is a predominantly uh, a forested area and some agricultural land is there uh, at this region. Uh, so, the thematic, uh, so here the methodology which we used within the GIS environment is explained here in this slide. The thematic maps are uh, compiled from the source data uh, products like a survey of India topo sheets, IRS 1D data. Uh, then uh, thematic maps were digitized and rasterized in the GIS environment and this uh, raster data is registered with the other thematic information. Uh, so, here we have already you, uh, discussed about the soil conservation service care number method. So, that uh, SESCN method is used for hydrological modeling here to estimate the rainfall excess of uh, each pixel at uh, various time intervals. And then time of concentration of all the pixels be, uh, based on the actual flow depth is calculated to estimate the hydrograph at the uh, outlet of the uh, watershed. So, here the methodology used is further explained. The algorithm uh, to find the rainfall access per pixel is say input is rainfall in millimeter curve number based on soil type uh, land use uh, class and AMC 3 uh, initial abstraction is uh, considered. So, for every pixel the theme is considered for the runoff estimation are land use, uh, hydrological soil group and then uh, antecedent moisture condition uh, 3 level is used. And the base flow of is assumed as 2 cubic meter per second by as per central water commission norms. Then output will be runoff volume for uh, each pixel. So, as I mentioned here for hydrological modeling we, we have used the SESCN method which we have discussed earlier. So, the, the equation is this one and then the curve number is obtained from this. So, where Q is the runoff in millimeter, P is the rainfall, S is the potential maximum retention and um, uh, IA is the initial abstraction and CN is the, and the curve number. So, now say the algorithm to find actual flow length and the time of concentration. So, input is as I mentioned we give it as digital elevation model in ASCII file that means elevation of each pixel and the process is 3 by 3 grid a minimum among the 8 adjacent cells and flow length is 23.5 meter horizontal and vertical direction and flow length is 1.414 into 23.5 diagonal direction. So, the removal of pits is done as in the within the uh, when we develop the detail elevation model and then minimum distance from the pixel of lowest elevation is considered and uh, output is lag time based on hydraulic uh, length, uh, slope and uh, surface retention time of concentration by uh, lag method. So, based upon the these all this uh, available data uh, within the GIS environment. So, here uh, we used the gram plus plus package which belongs to IIT Bombay. Uh, so, uh, based upon various uh, data available topo sheets, the remote sensing data and then uh, various field information we have generated uh, various maps uh, within the GIS environment. So, here this figure shows the hydrologic uh, soil groups uh, of the Amba watershed based upon the available data which we fed into the GIS uh, platform and then that has given this map. Uh, this is the hydraulic soil groups and then uh, using the remote sensing data first uh, we did a fast color composition analysis for the Amba watershed. So, this shows standard FCC of uh, Amba watershed within the GIS environment. And then uh, say a detail analysis of the IRS 1D list 3 band 2 band 3 and band 4 is uh, done. Uh, classes are identified as agricultural lands, uh, built up lands, grass lands, open forest and dense forest. So, using the false color composition now we have identified the various land use um, and uh, land cover and uh, based upon that uh, this for the watershed area the uh, land use map is produced. So, here we can see the green indicates agricultural land, um, blue indicate built up land then this is grassland, open forest, uh, dense forest. So, then uh, using this uh, specified procedure we have generated detail elevation model. So, this shows the detail elevation model for the Amba watershed. So, the elevation uh, values are listed here uh, uh, in meters. 
So, the elevation varies from uh, 52.6 meter to uh, 800 uh, meter uh, above the mean sea level. So, this is the little elevation model for the uh, Amba watershed and uh, this shows the slope map. So, based upon the little elevation um, map DEM we have generated the slope map. The slope is varying say, in, uh, say 1 to 35 percent. So, uh, these are all hilly regions and this is where the, the stream is going and this is one of some of the uh, flat area where some agricultural land is there as you can see here in the previous slide. So, this uh, uh, grasslands or um, the some of the this is all forested land. Uh, so, then as I mentioned uh, uh, we use the SCSCN method where say for some of the uh, rainfall events uh, uh, we uh, by using the detailed elevation model and uh, various maps we uh, have run the model uh, to obtain the runoff. So, this uh, shows the discharge versus time. So, here uh, the rainfall data these details are not given here, but here the main purpose of this case study is how we can effectively utilize geographic information system to produce various uh, maps, various uh, data sets. Uh, for a hydrologic modeling. So, that was the purpose. So, here uh, infiltration rate is assumed as 0.35 millimeter per hour and runoff volume was estimated uh, for this um, particular um, uh, this thing as 42.85 percent. So, that way uh, we can utilize the, the GIS platform uh, for um, uh, generation of detailed elevation model, soil map, land use land cover map, uh, slope map. Um, uh, uh, like that. So, that will be very useful for the, the hydrological modeling or that way these details we can utilize for uh, water uh, for the development of uh, various watershed management plans. So, these are some of the important references used for today's lecture. So, before closing down uh, some of the uh, questions, tutorial questions, critically study various GIS packages available for watershed based studies. So, this you can get from the internet for various packages we have uh, discussed uh, uh, earlier. Then evaluate the capabilities of each package, explore how effectively the GIS packages can be used for development of watershed management uh, plans. Then uh, some self evaluation questions, illustrate the working of GIS with the details of various components, discuss the various stages of GIS implementations, uh, describe basic steps in typical uh, geographic information system applications for watershed management, then illustrate GIS based uh, spatial data modeling. So, these details based upon today's lecture you can uh, get uh, the answers. Then uh, some assignment questions, how we represent surfaces and subsurface um, in uh, GIS and what are the advantages of GIS uh, applications for various uh, problems, illustrate GIS data sources and data structures describe GIS dimensionality issues, describe various applications of GIS uh, in uh, water management. Uh, now, uh, before closing down uh, say the unsolved problem. So, for your watershed using ArcGIS tools develop GIS database, then uh, based on topo sheet and uh, other um, available data generate detailed elevation model, land use, land cover map, slope map, soil map, etcetera. So, this uh, we can use once it is developed for your area, you can use for various other purposes for watershed management development plans. Then explore how effectively uh, GIS can be used for uh, watershed management plans. So, today what we discussed is the, the basics of geographic information systems and how we can effectively utilize GIS for uh, watershed uh, management and development plans. Thank you.